Yes. Hey everyone. Hello. Thanks, Lila. We got you. Hi, Lila. Uh, and Fiona. Maybe. The first time Fiona is here, isn't it? Hey, and Ella. And Susan. Uh, Good to see hey, you. Ella. Hi. And Shemaine. Hello. Good to have you here. And uh, Phoebe. Yay. Hey, Lila. And Jay. Lovely Lila. And Amy. Oh, Amy, I love your Hi. messages on Discord. Um, Patty. Hey, Patty. And Rovina. Oh, Hello. nice. So nice. Looks like it's going to be a small group, a small today, group today. Oh, yes. Last, yeah. last one before, before summer. Yeah, on a practical <laughs> note, today is the last meeting before, before summer. I think, and we're back on the twentieth of August. August with the inquiry group, and back on the thirtieth of August with the Q and A. Q &A. And we have a lot of new people. Hello, Sylvia. Hi. A lot of new people, so we're not going to dance crazy today. Yeah, um, we don't want to scare off all the new people. <laughs> We can dance crazy after yes. after summer. Yes. <laughs> we'll just wait a couple more minutes for see if anybody else is coming before we start the meditation. We'll just give it a couple minutes. Okay. No one else. And um, then we can talk a bit about Discord. Yeah. Sure. If you're not aware, we have Discord, which I warmly can recommend you to to join, especially now when we are off on. On summer holiday, we, we're not completely gone. I mean, it's not like we are still reading we're, on Discord and yeah, I mean, but it's just literally right here, same house. We're not, we're yeah, actually not going anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> um, it's it's just so you know, so so there are no expectations of us, uh, answering questions and all that. Um, but on Discord, we have an amazing community with people that are super super active, and we are really pulling on that hive mind. Yeah. where every experience that that you have had on your path is super useful for other people because there are other people that are in exactly the same boat as you. And there, that also means that there are lots of people in there that has been in the boat that you are in and that can give suggestions to what they did um, in the process. So it's an amazing community to be a part of. And there's also the opportunity to join a spontaneous group video group meetings by entering into a room and if somebody else see that you're there and they want to talk to then they just come in and then you have a meeting um so i can warmly recommend you if you're not a member yet of discord to write to todd mm. on unfettered mindfulness at gmail.com and then you get a link to to join all right i think that's right so oh one more in is here well, I heard just come in. Um, I'm going to, whoops, where am I? I'm going to spotlight us. There we are. Maybe we should move this a bit down. Okay. So, um. You made it safe. Yeah. So we're, so we're going back to the regular format of just opening up with a relatively short and guided meditation. Um, I think today we're just going to get back into the body, especially because we have some new people here and we just want to um, reinforce the importance of really being aware of what is happening in the body at any moment and the things that we make out of um, those sensations that are showing up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, a really different shape between what is your sense experience about what is happening and what is thoughts yeah. about it. So I invite you to get comfortable, find a posture where you can be attentive and alert, but also relaxed. If you're sitting straight up, allow the spine to stretch. <clears throat> 
Picture your head like a helium balloon floating above the rest of the body. And take a deep breath, allowing the shoulders and the chest to rise, rise, rise. And as you exhale, let everything go while the head remains suspended. Take another deep breath. And on the exhalation, let go of any thoughts about the past or what might be coming up later today. On the next breath, take a deep inhalation and then exhale all of the expectations about this meditation, the meeting, getting anything from this at all. And on this next breath, take another big inhalation. And as you exhale, resolve to be here present right now, drop in to this moment. Feel the silence that is there in that momentary pause between thoughts. Often we get caught up in so many thoughts that we feel as though we are stranded somewhere in the mind all throughout the day. Even though thoughts aren't actually happening in the head, we for some reason feel that they are. And we feel that we are located in that headspace. And that leaves us disconnected from everything that's happening below the neck. The body goes on performing all of its activities and daily functions, and we rarely check in with it. It's giving us all sorts of signals and messages, warnings, and other information. And a lot of times we're completely oblivious to it because we're so wrapped up in thoughts, in narrations, in memories and projections about a future. So right now, we want to come out of that whole cloud of headspace and find out what is actually happening below the neck. So I invite you to, in whatever way is most efficacious for you, drop down into the body. So this might be finding a particular place of sensation that you can feel in the chest or the torso something that jumps out at you and seems noticeable, prevalent. It might be comfortable or it might be uncomfortable. There might be a tone of pleasantness or unpleasantness about it. It doesn't matter. We're just looking for some indication that there is sensation in the body. Once you've found this place of sensation, notice if it is there wholly unencumbered by any other thoughts or assumptions about it, or if the moment that you felt it, it brought with it a series of thoughts, a series of assumptions and meanings, perhaps memories and other associations regarding it. Do you even seem to notice where it is because you're seeing a mental image of the body or that region of the body seemingly grafted on top of it? So if the sensation is in your belly, do you see an actual belly or a torso that is supposedly your belly or torso? Do you have an internal mental map of some sort 
even if you're someone who doesn't have very vivid mental images, notice if there is something that still feels like a body map. Can you tell that there's a foot below a belly, which is below the head? If so, no matter how this is showing up, it's okay and very useful for our daily survival. But see if you can allow those to just float off. You don't have to pay attention to them and you don't have to believe them. For right now, just allow all of the attention to soak into those sensations. We're not being forceful with it. We're not trying to make something happen. We're just acting like a dry sponge, soaking in the wetness of that sensation. Being infused by whatever that sensation seems to be. See if you can feel that whatever seems to be the witness that might be located somewhere up in the head behind the eyes, that might be looking down on the sensation, that might be viewing it from a distance, that might be judging it, analyzing it, recognizing it. Notice that those sensations, those feelings of being the witnesser at a distance can dissolve into the same kind of particles as the sensations in the torso or the chest are being made, made from. As you're soaking in those sensations in the belly, the chest, the limbs, wherever they are, just notice that what seems to be the witnesser of them is made of those same sensations. It takes a thought to create that distinction. So right now, let all thoughts go. If you have any feelings of anxiety or restlessness that come up when you remain silent and just feeling into the bodily sensations, recognize how you notice that those feelings are anxiety or restlessness. There is no such thing as an emotion, as an inherent object. There is no reality to something called anxiety or restlessness. So just take in the sensations that are there. And if you aren't feeling one of those two, see if there's another emotional tone that seems to be pervasively coloring this moment. 
something that may be identifiable as loneliness or sadness or joy, ease, contentment. However it shows up, notice first the associated label that comes with it, and then allow the label to float off into space and come back to the actual raw sensation of the moment. Right now, it doesn't matter why we call it anxiety or restlessness or joy or stillness. We just want to be clear on what the actual sensations are that make up this experience. Setting all judgment aside, absorb equally into whatever that emotional tone happens to be. We navigate through life under the illusion that there is a me in here who is experiencing emotions. There is someone separate from the experiences and that we are often at the mercy of these emotions that pass through like damaging weather patterns. We can't do anything but just brace for them, distract ourselves from them, try to stay safe until they blow past. But this is an illusion because there is no one there separate from the emotional experience. And the emotion itself is not a thing. There are simply sensations arising and passing. And no one who is even the witnesser of those sensations. So as you become more and more ingrained into these sensations, the one that seems to be separate from them starts to dissolve. It doesn't need to be reflection about the sensations. The sensations simply are. Sensations don't need to mean anything. They simply are. The sensations don't need to be changed or improved upon to go away or to remain. They will be here for just as long as they are here. And then they will be gone again. Feel this ever changing display of sensations. moving around the space that sometimes might feel like a body and other times might feel like a wide, empty, vast spaciousness. 
with clouds of particles moving in and out, blinking off and on. And recognize that there is no one in there separate from any of those sensations. Sensations is all that there is. If a thought chimes in and tries to say something about the experience or contradict it or distract from it, just notice, does that thought create a reality? If there's no self in this vast, empty spaciousness, can a single thought create a self? Or is it simply more sound sensations passing through this same vast spaciousness? Any emotion that seems to come up, just feel the totality of the sensations of it. They join in with all of the other sensations that make up the constellation that we call a body. There is no difference between the sensations that make up the feeling of fear or joy, or a foot, or a head. Throughout the rest of the meeting, you have the opportunity to remain in contact with these sensations. You can either allow the body to reconfigure and feel the boundaries and feel the weight of the bum on the seat and the feet on the floor, or you can stay open and spacious You can notice as you are speaking or hearing other people speak, if those words are actually coming from you or if they're emerging from the same spaciousness. And you can notice as you hear other people share and have thoughts and questions arise. Notice the emotional tone that arises with them and instead of taking ownership of those emotions and of those stories, simply remain in contact as those sensations that arise and change. There need not be permanence in the sensations or in the feeling of one who is the witness of those sensations. Whatever you take yourself to be comes and goes 
just as frequently as these sensations arise and pass on again. There is no consistent you anywhere in experience. It is a pattern of thought and a pattern of sensation constantly moving and constantly changing. Don't cling to any of it. Remain as free, spacious, unencumbered, and open as feels comfortable. And then gradually open your eyes, take a deep breath, and rejoin the room. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, I needed that. Thank you. Oh. So nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, I love that. I love that pointing to that there's no difference between the sensation of a foot or sensation of guilt. Yeah. It's just sensation. Thank you. Yeah, it's sensation and a thought added to it. I love uh, that. Thank you. Yeah. So for new people who are here, um, first off, welcome. And um, as you can see, you can just raise your virtual hand if you have a question or a comment. Um, we'll go in order. Or we take new people first. Or, yeah, we might actually, because, because, um, and this is, you know, obviously we love all of you old timers that have been with us, but um, <laughs> we, we, we learned during the retreat too that we want to try to give um, uh, new people a chance because not everybody feels comfortable um coming forward especially when a lot of people have their hands up a lot of us tend to um say well they're more important or you know they, their question is probably better than mine or we have all of these ways to kind of belittle ourselves and to to not step forward so we want to make everybody comfortable to ask any kind of question there's no judgment at all with any questions or comments that you might have um, absolute safe space to bring anything up. Uh, we are recording and it does go um, online, but if you have something that you don't want um, public, just ask us uh, before you start that part of the question and we can pause the recording. Um, so that part will be cut out. Yeah, and I also want to say that it's very helpful for all the new, that all you old guys put your hand up. Yeah. Just like Maureen and Rowena, you have your hands up now. Um, you're you're old. So <laughs> you're, you're one of the old ones. So you put your hand up, and it's so comfortable for all the new people to see that. Oh, oh, I can do that. Yeah. Um, but I also want to say to all you old guys that if we see a new one like Fiona having her hand up, she's skipping the line and coming in front because she <laughs> so want to hear from all the new ones. And it doesn't mean that we doesn't love all you old ones. You know, you know that we. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. So not only did I skip you, call you old, <laughs> and put you in the back of the line. I mean, I don't know why you guys keep are, coming. Are I really gonna, don't. Are you going to miss us for the next few weeks? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do without this kind of abuse? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we take. I think we take Fiona yeah. first. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. There we go. Hello, Hello, Fiona. Fiona. Welcome. Yeah, it's a privilege that I'm getting. In VIP treatment. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm Fiona from the north of England. Um, and I found you guys through the gorgeous Phoebe, who is oh. my dear, dear, dear friend, who I love very, very much. Yeah, so do we. Thank you, Phoebe. And um, I did, I did come on the retreat. And um, I attended all, I think I missed about two, um, but I, I just felt really overwhelmed by so many people um, and I didn't want to talk. Um, I understand that. And I haven't really engaged a lot on Discord. 
um, and um, I've just um, so so just I don't want to go into a story too much, but I've had a a, a situation going on with somebody in my family that I love very very much for twelve years, and um, um, so uh, two and a half years ago they cut me out of their life again, mm. um, and um. And then about four months later at Christmas um, or January, there was a couple of texts in between. Um, but when, um, but I was on empty by that time. I was kind of done. And, um, you know, both my parents killed themselves when I was very young. Um, so suicide is kind of a big thing for me. And this, obviously, this is a part of my family that I love very much. Mm. And um, I just, I'm just going to send you a message. I've, I've copied and pasted it from WhatsApp. And I just want to send it to you, but I'm sending it to you privately because it just, this was one of the last messages they sent me. It just bothers me. And I just want some... Particularly, um, this was a conversation where I was trying to put boundaries in with them and say, look, I'm not responsible for you and how you feel anymore. And just trying to set myself free. <laughs> and um, I just want to know what, like, how, like, it just bothers me what they wrote there. Why? Why is that? Why I I I'm I'm not being rude or anything, but you seem like a lovely person, and what you are responding to them is that you're sending back love and sending love and sending love, and like Todd always says, love can only be received. If you can send love from now and forever to that person, that person can clearly not receive. What bothers me is the threat that's there about killing themselves. But and that's not, it's not, and it's my fault. Yona, it's not your decision. It's not your decision. What people choose to do with their lives, it's not your responsibility and you're not accountable and not for your parents either. That was their decision and it had nothing to do with you. What we have to deal with is, is the feeling of loss and the feeling of helplessness. Just thank you so and, much. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that is in you, no matter if they're here or if they're not here. <sighs> the feeling of love you have towards them is not going to change. But you cannot force anyone to receive love. If they can't receive, they can't receive. That's got nothing to do with you. It's like speaking Chinese to someone that doesn't understand Chinese. If they, if they do not understand love, if they can't receive it in any way, then you can give and give and give and give. And it's not your fault if they can't receive. They just can't receive. It doesn't mean that we should stop giving love. Mm. We should keep giving love but we can't have a hook into them receiving. Obviously, in terms of the suicide issue, you know, I don't know what the rules are in England, but I'm assuming that if you're really worried that somebody is actually going to harm themselves, that there are authorities that you can call to, to check up on This them. was, this was, um, this was two and a half years ago, and 
I 100% know how well resourced this person is. That they live in a very nice house. They've got no mental health issues. Clearly, they do. I, I, Fiona, I would like to dispute that. Clearly, they do. Clearly, they have mental only towards me. Trust me, they're very well resourced. They've got a very, very good job. They're very, very successful in the world. Got lots of friends, and yeah. So the all the all this I've never seen, and I've never seen this person behave towards anybody else like this, except to me. So, 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 yeah. Again, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot. We, I think we could unpack a lot in this and because we don't have all the background information. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. But... No, 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 not, no. Not it's not anything to apologize it's for. It's just that for two and a half years, it's just bothered me that I didn't, and if, I, what I, in that conversation was the first time that I was trying to put boundaries in with this person. And as soon as I put the boundaries in, it escalated to a, a suicide threat. And it, it was just like one of the worst things that anybody could ever say to me because of what happened probably, to my parents. Why and for two and a half years, it's just bothered me, like, like, because I didn't jump in. <laughs> but but Fiona, what it, it sounds like what, what bothers you is that you put up boundaries, mm. that you make clear boundaries, and now you feel guilty for doing that. That That is only you being played. You know, yeah. it's 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 a disrespect from anyone not respecting a boundary. A no is a no. And people starting to acting out, no matter what age they have, when they hear a no, that's got nothing to do with you. It's their issues. They have big emotions and they can't deal with it. Yeah. It's something they should take up with their therapist. It's not something that you should carry around. It's not yours. Yeah. And if you have had a history of having a difficult time setting up boundaries. And then this person does this in one of the rare instances when you did try to set them up, their act of that is so manipulative and abusive mm -hmm. towards you that you can't take that on as any sort of indication yeah. that setting up boundaries is a bad thing or that you did anything wrong by it. It's this reflects on them not being comfortable with having boundaries set with having anybody say no to them or however this all played out. It's, 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 well, a... I love this person very much. It was really a lot. And, and, and... It, 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 and I hate even saying this word, to be honest, but it is, it, it's emotional black, mate. Yes. You know, I'm not, I'm, I just want to like stop gaslighting myself about it. Like, but, but Fiona, use those you know, words that, yeah, you know what? That, that is emotional blackmail. Is, like, in that, in that conversation that, that you sent to us, there are so many red flags. Yeah. There are so many red flags. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't love the person. Of course you should. But it's also really healthy to keep healthy boundaries to yeah. a person like that. It's okay to love from it's a okay, distance. Exactly. Exactly. And be grateful that there is a distance. Be grateful that you have no contact with that person for two and a half year. Be grateful for that because it's very toxic behavior. Yeah. It's very, very toxic behavior. You have not done anything wrong in setting a boundary. That's completely fine. You know, thank all gods that you have not been in contact for two and a half year because that is toxic to have in your life. And it doesn't mean that you can't love. You can love, you know, as much love as you have in you. You can send love every single day to this person. But, but you know, be grateful that you're not in contact. I think that's the thing why I've been, had the courage to um, come on the call and, and talk to you about it because actually I've been wanting to get back in contact with them and and i am going to reach out to them again why? within the next why, why, why don't you wait until because they because uh, sorry why don't you respect their their wish of not contact and wait until they reach out because the moment you reach out you are actually a red flag they have told you to stay away you should stay away you should wait until they contact you Otherwise, you are the red flag. Yeah. 
I just miss them so much. Yeah, but 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 that That's... that you have to talk with your therapist about. Yeah. That's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not for them to deal with you missing them. That's that's a you feeling. They have made it very, very clear they do not want to be in contact with you and you should respect that boundary. Exactly. They have said no and you respect that boundary. And the moment they want to be in contact with you, they will reach out and then you're standing with open arms. But you have to respect that no. You make yeah. you making contact with them is a huge red flag. And if they ask me, I would say stay away. If somebody is not respecting a no, stay away. No is is not ambiguous, amb ambiguous ambiguous in any way. No is very, very clear. And they told you to stay away, then do that. Respect, show respect and stay away and love on a distance. You can light a candle every day for them. You can pick fl fresh flowers and put up on a mantle in front of a picture every day. You can buy... Christmas gifts and birthday gifts and all of that every day. You can do all that, but do not be in contact with them until they contact you. It's it's a very clear sign of respect and love that you respect and know. Thank you. Yeah. And, and just when you have that feeling of missing them and wanting something from them, just feel into what what is what were you getting out of that relationship that you're missing i just i just love them very much and but you can do that yeah so so feel what is it that i just can't you know just <laughs> I just didn't think the thing for me, the worst thing for me is that, you know, I never got to say goodbye to my mom and dad because they were just gone and, you know, and, and just my worst fear is just never ever seeing this person again in my life when one of us dies and but, I but, never got to tell them how much I love them. But Fiona, Fiona, the best you can, all, all what you're doing right now is in your mind. What the, the, the suffering you're creating for yourself right now is in your mind and you keep picking pain up and picking it up and picking it up. You're, you're ruthless towards yourself right now. I, I understand you miss them. I understand that you love them and leave it at that instead of starting to predict the future of you never seeing them again and you never speaking with them again and all that that you keep picking up and create your you're scratching wounds into your heart by by what you're doing and it's ruthless mm -hmm. and it's not it's not called for stay in that open warm love that you have towards them stay in that you do not ever know if you see a person again no matter who it is no matter if you have contact with them or not you do not ever know if you see that person again. So hold that love in a very warm but light embrace. Love them as much as you can, but stop stop ripping out your heart all the time. It's, it's ruthless and not called for. If they want to be in contact with you, they will contact you. Until then, you keep loving them. And you can also use, you know, with your with your parents, I don't know if you've done any of this stuff before, but writing a letter now to them as though they were still alive to say everything that you would like to have said to them can be really cathartic. But also using the, the reparenting tools that we do, not only can you use those to go back to a time when somebody said something to you or you experienced something and then reparent that, but you can go back in your mind to a time when you wanted to say something to them and tell them everything that you wanted to say. And that can be such an unburdening of the heart because right now you have an idea that you never said that you love them and told them that. And I'm sure that's not really true, That that there's an idea that you should have had one more experience where you got to tell them how much you loved them before they were gone. 
And so that is a mind created thing because nothing is here right now. They're not here and their absence is not really here. Mm. You're sitting in a room just as you would be if they were still alive in another house on another part of the, of the country. So right now, any thought about their absence is still just as much a mind creation as it would be to go back in that time and to have that experience of telling them that you love them, giving them all of the expressions of love that you would like to have gone back and give. You can do that right now in the mind. I, I do. I do. It probably only been in the last two years because I don't, I don't, I don't buy into forcing people to forgive. And I, I just don't, I don't, I'm just don't. Um, but I've always been willing to forgive and it's been a long, slow journey with both of them. But in the last two years, it's just happened spontaneously where it all just, where it just doesn't hurt anymore. And then, you know, I don't, I, I don't buy into ghosts and stuff like yeah. that either. I just really don't. I'm not yeah. a very woo woo person. Yeah. But, you know, spontaneously, I'm sitting outside in my garden and I just imagine my mum and dad there and exactly. they're sitting and having a cup of tea and I just tell them how much I love them and, yeah. you know, and that I'm okay. And and that just, that was, it took a long time, but it's very real, you know. So, so in terms of, like, my mum and dad, I feel very, very clear. But, but I... It's all, I just imagined to... garden visits I have with them. That's yeah. really I just, really I just <laughs> want to the same thing with the person that exactly. that you don't have any contact with. The same, the person that you miss. At the moment in the curriculum, we're at the seventh feather, something out of nothing, and it's also working with time. And the only time, you know, time is not real. The only thing that we have that is real is right now. Whatever happened in the past is in our mind. Whatever projection we do about the future is in our mind. Right now, there's no difference in your life if you have contact with that person or if you do not have contact with that person. Let's say you had contact with that person. Let's say you had a wonderful relationship and you met regularly and you hugged and you kissed and you had amazing experiences together. Right now, your life will not be any different. Mm. There's no difference. You would still be sitting at a meeting. You would still be participating. There would just be other stuff you, that you would talk with us about. But the, the experience of your life in this moment is not different at all if you're in contact with that person or not. You have to go into your mind and reach into the past project a past that could have been different you have to go into your mind project into the future a future that could be different and neither of those are real and both of them are happening right now there's no difference in your life if you have contact with the person or if you do not have contact with the person there's no difference right now right now all i feel is 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 i just how much I love them, and it feels nice to know how much I love them. Because right, right, just right what now. you've just what you've just said to me now, Peniel, has landed with me as, you know, maybe maybe they were, maybe they are in my life, yeah. but nobody sees somebody, anybody who they love, twenty four hours a day. So yeah. me sitting here right now, yes, it, it's like Phoebe. Do you know what I mean? It's the yeah. same. I love it's Phoebe like and. In an hour's time, she's not going to be on the Zoom anymore. She's, but, but I don't ever stop loving Phoebe. Exactly. I don't sit there and cry. You know, oh, my God, I'm not with Phoebe. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And keep coming back to that. When you start to get that, the, those thoughts of missing and those thoughts of a reality being any different than what is happening right now, ask yourself, in this moment right now, what is missing? If you feel love for that person, if you feel love for your parents, what is actually missing right now? It's just a thought about something that could be any different, exactly. but it can't. It can't. Everything is as it is right now and nothing is missing. Not any people or persons or food or blankets or anything. 
everything is exactly like it's supposed to be. It's only in our minds that something is wrong. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you for being brave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And there's Ravina. Old Ravina. <laughs> Old Ravina. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, oh. So good to see you. There's a, there's a message from Zoom. Okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, uh, it's lovely to see you. And um, thanks to Fiona for her sharing and sending her much love. Yeah. And and also Todd, wow, what a beautiful meditation. Thank you. Really. Thank you. And I was struck how I think the word that I sort of look for in everything is is transparency. Mm. Um like the, the the there is no there is no identical fireball um being or eyes or anything that see hearing mm. transparent like that cognition happening effortlessly in the space not so much the same when the delivery is coming from here and sometimes um and i'm talking about my beloved other half what does come out is inappropriate mm. um, because it's not the classic it's not what's wanted to be heard and it comes out it sounds um you know not always in a way exactly yeah it's not agreeing it's not um it's not giving what is wanted. It's it's take for example, um, he's going to go traveling traveling to see his mom, who's very old, and he's really not well. Mm. And um, he he said this might be the last time I see her. And I I sat and I I sat and I I just said, well, you don't you don't know that. For sure, and you haven't even you've got you're going to be seeing her, but you don't know right now that it's the last time. Um, and I said, you know, these are these are just thoughts that you're thinking. It's not the truth. Well, that was the most terrible thing, terrible thing anyone could say. Um, and so, I I don't, I don't think there's any solution, but there's it's it's somehow the need sometimes which I have. Um, that I notice speaking the sort of efforting the efforting to find the right words um, so there's not this, that that transparency disappears because there's more um, invested somehow there's something happening in the system that's investing to try to give a delivery which is um, yeah more socially acceptable maybe um, I don't know so I, I don't I don't know if there's anything anything that you can say yeah. to speak to that. It's a super. Uh, where where would I find where would I find some that sort of like part? It's because it's hard when you're speaking to actually feel where there's some contractions going on. Yeah, well, and that's exactly what I was going to ask. Is what is okay? So mm -hmm. when you when you have that open spaciousness feeling where it's just words coming out and you can just hear them coming and you're just as much surprised and delighted by the words that are coming as the person who's listening to you right you know that kind of experience sentences just sort of start and continue all on their own accord and it is just waiting to see where the pauses are and what words end up plopping into into place what i'm curious about is the the actual experiential difference between that and when it feels like you are finding words and that there is a a a weight behind it that you have to 
you know, there's really something on the line here. And I know what you're talking about, obviously, but for you, I want you to notice, is it that there is more physical tension where it, it actually seems like, um, like a Alan Watts talks about how we get taught to focus when we're kids and we focus by tensing up muscles and really straining. Does it feel like you're feeling more tension in, in the jaw, the tongue, around the eyes, in that sort of region, when it feels like there's an efforting happening to come up with the right word, to struggle? Are you feeling like the actual physical contractions of muscles, like there is a doing happening? As you speak, and I'm thinking about it, yes, it's, it's in fact, it's, it, yes, it's, it's sort of definitely here and going into the head at the back. Yes, there's a there's a there's a there's a sort of a, I, I guess an old fear of mm. of not saying the right thing or needing to know something and then a fear, um, yeah yeah as you were talking that I hadn't really noticed because I'd noticed I've been unpacking hearing and filters on hearing and not wanting to receive but um, yeah yeah so notice all of those tensions are they actually doing anything though. No, no, right? <laughs> like it's just tension. I mean, it's like if I was talking and my foot sensation like this, yeah. it's just like my foot is contracting. Yeah. It's not saying the words. It's not my foot is not coming up with the sentence. Like mm -hmm. it, there's just a reaction in the body happening to the situation that you're in, where there's conditioning that mm -hmm. in this particular situation, this is like, this is a high stakes meeting. And if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to lose a multi-million dollar deal, or I'm just chatting in a cozy talk with my friend and I can be relaxed. And we have this idea that certain situations are different. And so then the body tightens up, heightens. I could say something wrong and he's going to be really offended by it. And so I have to be on alert, yeah. but that is a secondary tension that's not actually doing anything. It's not yeah. creating the sentences. You're not actually saying something different than you would otherwise. It's not like it's creating a, a, a Rowena that comes online all of a sudden who is there to, you know, use the, the, the thesaurus and come up with the best words for this situation and, you know, create a new sentence out of it. That being doesn't become created just because that tension is there. There's simply more self-identification because it feels like there's a contraction mm. and it yeah. feels like um, there might be a, a sort of that second layer of thought where there is a judgment of the words and more hesitance. You That's know. exactly what I was going to put. Yeah. Well, definitely there has, you know, hesitancy. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's exactly what I was going to point out because the muscles you're pointing out, it's the brace for impact yeah. muscles. Yeah. So before you even open your mouth, your body is already starting to brace for impact, which means that you have a story about when you when you tell your truth, when you say what is what is alive in your life, you have to brace for impact because it's not received by other people. So even before you're opening your mouth and saying your entire body is bracing for impact, which means that there's a little hint of expectation of disaster, but there's also a little hint of expectation for a hope for something fourth feather being received in a certain way. So it's, it's both of those are alive at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But see if you and, 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 and like Todd was pointing to just because you have the contraction in your body and it's bracing for impact, does that actually do anything? Is, is that really, is that connected at all to how it's received or how, their reaction is towards you just because you're tensing everything up and bracing for impact. Is there anything you can brace against? Really? It it's just it's just causes and conditions. It's just your your entire meat suit is reacting in a way that you were taught decades ago that yeah. that is what you need to to be careful about. But now you're an adult. You don't need to brace for impact. You can stand with open eyes and completely relaxed body and they are raging on in their corner of their world. If it's not received, it's not a gift, you know? So it's like, you don't even need to brace for impact. It's just an old, old embodied indoctrination that you have of, of what you need to do. But that, that was when you were a child. It's not relevant now. 
Right. And what about if the delivery is, I mean, in a way, um, there's a tendency to want to provoke. Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of natural in a way um, to to get and it, to get in sort of deeper into a conversation, but it's never very well received. And um, do I need? I should look into that. I guess. I mean, I, I, yeah. The, it's sort of like a little bit. I think it's a little bit behind. So I maybe I need to look into that as well. It's, yeah, it's it's still about an expectation, right? Yeah, you have an expectation of of a conversation with that person is going now for the first time in decades to take a depth it has never ever taken it before. It's probably never going to happen. That no. you have you have your spiritual family and you have your hive mind. You have the community here. You can be open and you can talk on that level and you can go as deep as you want to. I mean, there are people embracing you no matter what you bring to the table. And then there's like. The outside family that is not the spiritual part, where sometimes it is as deep as a teaspoon, and <laughs> and that is as deep as it as it can go, and you can't you can't expect other people to to be, you know, something they're not. Yeah. In in, in the community, it's people that have chosen to go deep. We we are kind of like forcing it on our family. They have chosen not to go deep, and we are forcing them to be deeper than a teaspoon and that it's unfair on them you have your community to go deep leave them alone you yeah. know leave your family alone if they want to go deep they will go deep do not force it upon them i would say also it because i agree completely um it, it's that skillful knowledge of mm -hmm. how to to you know what you said regarding our the thoughts you know what that he doesn't really know that it's true that it is just thoughts that this could be the last time that he sees her and mm -hmm. he truly doesn't know and that is absolutely the case but i think we forget when we're doing this sort of thing there was a period when we were all so identified with thought that that would have been a very triggering thing to hear and i think as we release these identifications and we become acclimated to it it just seems like yeah, of course. Like that just seems so logical yeah. and reasonable. Yeah. But for other people, and it's received, you know, so like as a truth rather than a platitude. Yeah. Yeah, but for other people who are still really identified with that, who haven't come from that, that can be deeply um, hurtful. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like it's denying their reality and denying yeah. their truth of the situation, and it's like you're trying to gaslight them, mm -hmm. and and so of course they mm -hmm. get really reactive to that but it's just because they're not seeing it with the clarity with which you are seeing the situation in this moment yeah um, and and, your... and that like you say we we kind of tend to forget how it used to be when we were identified and we really need to be mindful when we then stomp around it and i offended yeah. my brother the other day where he had an issue and i go like but that's your thought where to him it is most definitely much more than just thought. So I had to apologize. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, because I, in that moment, I forgot that I can't, I can't, um, I can't be with him as if there's no identification because there is. And, yeah. and it's, it's ruthless and it's, it's rude and it's cruel and everything when I'm just, you know, like I am with you guys, or mm -hmm. you guys are with, with Todd, you know, I need to be mindful about, about where he is. Yeah. So that's, that's the sort of learning the skill of having gone through and then having to go back and, and somehow assimilate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks. That's really helpful. Good. 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 Yeah. And lo lovely to be with you. Oh, Same, thank you. Always, you too. You too. So happy. I thought there was something that I was going to say, and then I forgot what it was because it was before we went on that. Mm, but, yeah, I, no, was it about the 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 being like? Well, we never know. Well, no, we'll just it's before that. that. It was prior to that. that. It, it was it was in still in the. Oh yeah, I know. Okay, so just as a practical um, thing for when when you still feel that identification of like this is this is a. Um, a high stakes moment and I don't want to offend somebody or there's something riding on this. And I feel that contraction, like you said, that bracing for impact. 
um, I would recommend to notice if you can, while you're in the situation, feel the spaciousness around the body, feel the spaciousness, that openness, and then see if you can, from that perspective, still notice that the words are still coming, that there isn't any more uh, self-direction of the words just because that seems to be there and see if you can hold that. And it's very much like that. We've mentioned it in the retreat. And then also I think here, the the Richard Lang fist squeezing exercise mm -hmm. where you like hold your hands out in front of you and you squeeze really, really tightly. And while you're holding that that tension, you can feel it. There is tension there out in the hands, but you have all of this spaciousness around it, this whole openness around here that doesn't feel any tension mm -hmm. and that there's talking that's happening and it's not tension gripping, you know, the voice isn't like straining. It's not a whole body thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's only affecting the hands and we have all this spaciousness from which to speak from. Yeah. And it's that same thing that you feel the contraction here, but it doesn't mean that the words are contracted or that they're coming from any more of a constricted identified place. So it's just really feeling that in the moment until you 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 experience it enough. Mm. Yeah, right. and I I just want also to just build on that yeah. that if that's for everybody, if you have like a period where you feel fear or anger or guilt or shame or any of that, you do that exercise where make a fist and feel the contraction. This is the guilt. This is the guilt. This is the contraction of the guilt, and then notice all the space around it. And then you can start, you can feel that, oh, wow, it is not, it's, it's not the entire world. The contraction is only here and it, it will evaporate. It will loosen. Yeah, that's great. Good. Thank you so that's much. So nice to see you. Really, really good. Enjoy your summer. Yeah. Thank you. You, you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, we got more ring. Yay. Do, 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 do. And spotlight. Hey, Hi, Maureen. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. I enjoyed that meditation yeah. just immensely. It was it was really impactful. Amazing. When you um So the sensation of the butt on the chair, and then when you introduced the um, who who is noticing the witness, and then notice that that is also coming from the same sensation. That just I I <laughs> that was incredible. Oh, that's that great. that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> laugh when you were talking about you know it's a foot or a head or a this or a that and I yeah so that was um I've been playing with the different what seems like different levels so there's the the me that can get just can um there's the witness me, which feels like a separate me to the me, me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm kind of looking, well, there can't be two me's, but I, I had been reading Jahara's uh, observations yeah. and, and the, but I, I couldn't quite go past the witness me, but still it felt like there's me and there's a witness me. And so in this meditation to just see it, to feel it all as sensation. Wonderful. Sensation. That was, that was incredible. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. you, you never know what's going to land with somebody and what isn't. And so that's so good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It was really great. Uh, but at the beginning of the meditation, you said something about thoughts not coming from the mind did I? I i i it's when i'm doing them it's just the spontaneous and i don't actually remember what did i say i can't remember, remember. It was, no it was something like that and i was like what <laughs> what they don't come from the mind so do they or don't they <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember exactly how i phrase it but i would say okay the another deep topic yeah but when we're 
depends on what we're defining as a mind to begin with. So I think what I was hard to remember really where I was no, coming if, from if, with that. If, if we're just answering that question, yeah. then no thoughts do not come from a mind. But yeah. thoughts arise as a plethora of input on lots of different things. So you have like, um, you might close your eyes and you get a, a an image of a dog and then you hear a bird outside and then you think of, oh, later, I need to go to the grocery store. Oh, by the way, barbecue the other week. That was really, it's like a plethora of things that is happening and it's inputs that is happening through the senses. So when we talk about that, you have the seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, those senses is 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 reality. What you think about seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, that's not reality. That is a thought about reality. But so who is the brain, is the mind generating that thought or is it coming from life just channeling it through because I think I think the mind the mind is making up a lot of things but small inputs so it creates like a patchwork blanket of input from all the senses at the same time so okay. it's not it's not like one one e plus one equals two it's not how the mind works it's like one plus coffee equals a bicycle it's like it's completely uh, okay but it is okay. way it's stored and and I would say also, again, it depends on how we're defining all these things. I think if we talked about, you know, from what we understand scientifically, yeah, it sounds like the brain, if we're talking about it, is creating all of the thoughts that are there. Experientially, if we didn't know that the brain existed, mm -hmm. then we have to look at, because because again, this is where all this is coming from. We can't just rely on learned knowledge of, you know, what neuroscience seems to be saying things are. At all this is at the moment, exactly. Awakening has always been done for thousands of years in similar ways where you just investigate experience regardless of whatever seems to be the scientific root of things because they didn't have fMRIs and stuff like that a couple thousand years ago. Um, so in that experience, how we define mind is one of those things which has been, it's different depending on the culture and the tradition that we're talking about. So in some cases, mind is the greater awareness of everything in which things are just appearing and, and dissolving again. And so it's to see that if we if we take the idea that like like in buddhism we have the idea that the the mind is like a mirror and it's simply reflecting whatever shows up on it and that there is no substance to the mind itself it is just this open possibility in which things appear and disappear and so in that regard the the thought isn't itself being created by the mind as the world isn't being created by the mind, it's simply a reflection of what's there mm. filtered through, as we talk about, the um, preconceived notions that are that are making it into more than just what it is. Yeah. So in Zen, we talk about mirror mind, which is the closest we can come to just directly reflecting what's in front of us. And, and, it's, the... and it's, it's, it's just having that, having that, that the mirror mind, the mirror is here. Yeah. Like this is the mirror. It's not a me. This is a mirror that is just reflecting everything out there. There's not any eyes or an I or me, any yeah. anything behind it. It is just whatever this mirror is pointing at is is arising in the yeah. mirror. And where we we sully that mirror is in the seventh fetter, making something out of nothing, where you have a pure reflection of whatever is here. And as the head turns, it's something completely different. And then we start to go, oh, this view is much more uh, desirable than that view. This view has this object in it that I can name and tell a story about and have all the judgments about. This view has a lovely sunset. And I'm very much, you know, much more drawn to that. That's taking and putting a whole bunch of other stuff onto the raw reflection of just image image you know sound sound it's all of those other layers that 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 dirty the mirror and it can cause some attachment to it when realistically there is just the openness to it and so 
all of the thoughts are our um, conditioned responses to mm. how we're relating to everything that's showing up on that mirror. It's a bit like it's a bit like a movie screen, yeah. and whatever whatever causes and conditions you have in your bolted backpack, th those are the film roles that are being put on, yeah. and you can only put a film role on that you have an experience about. If you have only experienced westerns, you can't put on a rom com because it's not <laughs> part of the backpack. So if you only have if you have had a childhood with lots of war movies and that is what is on all the film roles, then when you suddenly come to a community like this and you hear about love, you haven't got a film role about that. So it's like, it's, it's difficult to feel that. And that is when you need to become aware that it's just the bullshit backpack that is full of anger and fear and guilt. And, but it's just, it's just an idea it's not reality. Other people have other film roles and have other experiences, other causes and conditions in, in their life. Yeah. So, so, so back to the question, if it's the mind that is creating the thoughts, we yeah. do not know. We do not know. <laughs> okay. I would, I actually want to get to the, my, the question I really wanted to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that long. That was a, that was a really interesting uh, diversion. Uh, a little, little rabbit hole we got there. So I've been to the gym and been, I have some questions with regard to the gym. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so with the eye circles, what I notice is that if I did it right now, I wobble between 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. If I do it at the gym, I, I, oh, so I wobble between 10 and 12 if I do it right now, but the rest of the circle is fairly smooth. Mm -hmm. I have an experience of going around a circle. When I'm at the gym, I wobble as well between 10 and 12, but the rest of the circle can be wonky and slower to find yeah. my way around. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, um, can do, I just, do, uh, do, yeah, do sorry. you know why? Well, yeah. actually I had a question just, okay, just, just for clarification. So when you're in the gym, are you actively doing the exercise like with weights while you're doing the eye rolls? Well, at, right. So at, versus, so, at home? uh, yeah, I just noticed as I was writing this question down that when I did it on my own, it also wobbled there. I hadn't really noticed that before. Um, but yeah, so I've been taking my time getting used to the machines and figuring out how to place the seats and everything else. And uh, so I, I think I finally have it sorted. Um, so I find sometimes that it's um, um, it's too many moving pieces to actually yeah. do the whole movement at the same time as doing the eyes and <laughs> yeah. the mantra. Yeah. Some exercises are more suitable or more simple, I guess. Um, so, um, so, 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 oh, there's so many different questions. So when I start off, I find a couple of the machines, um, the lowest weight that it comes in is the highest I can yeah. actually do. Yeah. Yeah. So for ex for instance, the leg extension machine, I can the lowest weight is 20 pounds, and I can just move a small part of that range. Mm. And also the shoulder press because I can't do I can't go low because it it uh, irritates my shoulder. Mm. So I just do the range that I can. Yeah. Um. So, how would you suggest, for example, with the shoulder press? Um. Because I don't think I could do the eye circles and the. Would it be good to just start with a mantra? Yes. And just Yes, because, because shoulders is about taking up space. It's about it's about yeah, taking up space. Taking if if you take your arms out to the side right now, up in shoulder height. Come uh -huh. on, Maureen. Come on, come on. Yeah, oh and that, and then and then then you point your finger out to the one side and point the finger out to the other side. Right. This is your full height. 
So if you move like that, this is how much space Maureen takes up. <laughs> yeah. J just just sitting and doing this, you can feel how provoked you are. Stand in the stand in the supermarket and do that. You know, uh -huh. be out, be out, be out <laughs> in a plaza with other people and do that. This is how much space you take up. And this is why it's difficult just to do it. So having having your arms out to the side on a parking lot and going, this is me. I'm taking up this much space and I have a full right to be here. You can do the airplane. So this is how much space you take up when you do the airplane. This is this is Maureen out from there to there and feel comfortable with that. Keep doing that until you feel comfortable with that. Then you can start with the eye circles, but start, start out with you just taking up space. So not in the gym. You're just talking about not on the machine. You can, you can, but the, your reaction to what I just showed you seems to me that you doing it in your living room with no other people is going to be provocative enough. <laughs> Okay, that's a good idea. And um, in, in generally speaking, I would just say also any of the machine stuff, it's really good to get a feel for the actual movement just independently by yeah, itself. Just yeah. really get that locked into the body so that you know what it feels like to do the proper movement. So you feel the muscles engaging and really feel the comfort in that before you even start adding the mantra or the eye circles to it. Because then you really have a feel for this is mm. the position. These are the muscles that are engaging. This feels smooth and, and comfortable and then add the stuff on. And then you'll really see the difference of like, okay, this works great by itself. And then as soon as I add a mantra or do the eye roll, it's like, okay, the, the muscles are just, just okay. um, uh, completely caving in or, or have, yeah. I lose all the strength. Yeah. I see Julie's comment. Um, I'm already doing it without the pin in. <laughs> that is <laughs> for some of them. Yeah. So I would also like to be able to improve my muscular strength. Yes. So is there a way to do incorporate both into a time at the gym? The 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 thing about it is that that what we encourage people to do when we do this embodied awakening. It is that you allow the body to be weak when it's weak and you create space for the body to be weak and you work, you, you get through all that old conditioning that is in your body. So for example, like your shoulders taking up space, you can't build anything on your shoulders when your shoulders are not strong and they're not strong if they have a built in underlying belief about you not being allowed to take up space. So you can forget all about building anything anywhere when there's underlying beliefs in the body about yourself that okay. needs to, you need to create space for that first so it's like releasing um experiencing and expressing like we say in the awakening embodiment and then when you have done the exercises and and you have released everything then it's super easy for the muscle to build to build and to become stronger because there's no sticks in the wheel anymore but you need to get rid of all the sticks in the wheel first. And that is what we do with the embodied awakening. So what about the machines that I can put 20 more pounds? Off you go. Off so you go. Would, I, would yeah. I sort of warm up with the higher weight and then do the drop it down to do the. Um... It's, it's, it's two different things. Yeah. It's two different things. I would recommend you to work with all all the old conditioning, all the bullshit backpack, get all that out of the way, and then you can start to build the, the body. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So just one minute. Let me. Yep. Um... And before we forget, if I could just interject one thing. So when you're doing the actual exercises, like e e without the, the, the mantra or the eye rolls, when you're, even when you're just starting out, what we did in the meditation where you just absorb into the sensations can be really useful with this too, because that's going to also get to what Pranilla was saying with the, the beliefs that are locked in there, that if you're just doing one motion and you're feeling the muscles that are actually engaging in that, and instead of doing it like from the outside witness that's going like, okay, now I'm, you know, strengthening, strengthening, strengthening and moving the muscle feel into the muscles that are moving and really just 
suck into those sensations and mm-hmm. dissolve into that sensation. And you're probably going to find that they're just in doing that without adding any mantras or anything else. There can be some emotions that arise. You might feel like you're going to throw up. You might feel, you know, other things can can come out of that just by being aware of the feelings of the of the motion of the um the movement of the muscles. And mm-hmm. so just like allowing that to be there, just feel into the raw sensation mm-hmm. of of the movement. That can be super super. Would, cool. Yeah, agree. And expand like what you did in the meditation to where the the witness where it all became one sensation, just whatever was going on. Safely. I, I'm a little reluctant if you're using like weights to like, you know, because if you have like a, a dissolution moment and then you're, you know, if you've got like a free, <laughs> 40 pound free weight in your hand and the next thing you know. So, so, okay. so safely. It's not <laughs> sad. <laughs> Calling from the ER. Uh, exactly. It's not sad. <laughs> so maybe maybe get a feel for it with no weight to begin with if you're going to do that sort of thing because you can really feel like if you just take your your hand up and you just do like a bicep curl. yeah everybody do that yeah if you take your arms out in front of you and then you with force bend your arms as if there's weight so it's like isotonic that you feel the force that is happening in your muscles really feel the sensation really feel the, the sensation Feel the now, tension. This this movement is about receiving love. So you can sit and you move your arms, and then you say, "It's easy for me to receive love." And for some of you, you start to get nauseated, or you can't bend your arms, or you at the moment you start to think what this is actually about, the body goes like, "Oh, oh, oh can't do that." Yeah. So so you don't yeah. even you don't even need the gym to do all this activating the body and activating the muscles and all the trauma in the muscles you can do that on your kitchen floor well with the extra the daily exercises a number of them are yeah 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 okay this is really helpful oh good. so good 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 so is it important if i with when i'm at the gym to pair the machines together the back the chest and the back should they it- as as always, I would say, you know, go with what feels right. It's not you in your mind intellectually deciding what you're going to do. It's your body that is guiding you. Nine yeah. feather flowing through everything without you being a stick in a wheel in any way. Okay. So one last question. Yeah. Left adductor muscle. When I do the butterfly, like that muscle has been complaining for a very long time. A decade maybe <laughs> I, um so i always have to prop up if i'm sitting cross-legged generally i put something under that knee but i just wonder if there's something the butterfly i have to have two pillows under that side to sit comfortably and then i i'm anytime it sort of stretches a little i don't it's there's a you can you can do it the other way around so you lie you um how can i explain that how would you explain that doing that when you lean forward in the butterfly so when you have your feet together and then the no you're you're like on your stomach oh okay like more like a frog but with your feet. yeah 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 how would you explain that exactly as you did i think keeping keeping the soles of the feet together but lying on your stomach so that your knees are stretched out flat against the floor yeah but any okay Go ahead. No, 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 no. Gonna... So, so I, it... that I could do that the, without activating that. <clears throat> so, what, what, what is it you feel in the hip? It's not the hip; it's the adductor muscle. You know that in, inner thigh muscle yeah. on just on the left. Yeah. What, what, what is it you feel? Uh it's extremely uncomfortable. Like pain. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Because, because the the that muscle is connected up to the pubic bone, so it's connected to to the to the bottom of the pelvic floor. It's it's part of the of the hip movement where you take your your leg out to the side. So you yeah. can you can sit up straight and you have like I can't show it when I sit here, where you have like your leg that way, and then the leg out to the other side. It is uh-huh. connected in there. You can put. Um, a finger on the muscle it's connect it's it's connecting on the on the pubic bone 
and you can feel where where the tension is mm -hmm. so you can you can very softly put a pressure there on on the insertion of the muscle when you take your legs that that side where it's completely relaxed and that side where it's out and then it's more tense sometimes though closing it in creates discomfort yeah. as well i don't know why that's because of, of the the antagonist on the other side on the sacrum so if we we're, we're, we're back to, we're back to the frog on the bed okay frog on the bed yeah okay. yeah Sorry that. yeah but if you have in your mind that you see where the muscle is connected, the, the, the pain that the body is showing you is not anything against you. It's a cry for help. It's, a, it's really, you know, taking your hand, putting your hand where, where the insertion of, of the muscle is, where the pain is, and then slowly, slowly just massaging uh, on it and, and see if you can feel where it's connected and see if you can help out at all in that area. If you can, also um put a f <laughs> a finger in on your on your bum cheek when you take your leg out to the side if you have an an abductor issue you you would feel it on the outside how do i describe where that is it's there oh you feel that yeah yeah very much so how do, how do i describe that so if you have if you have okay, if you put your hand like that on your sacrum, mm -hmm. and you kind of like take your thumb out to yeah. the side where the thumb meets this the the bum, you push mm -hmm. in there, leave your thumb there, and then you take your arm, yep, yeah, your leg out to the side. There you have the point, the trigger point for that muscle. Okay. That is helping with the abduction at the pelvic floor in the front. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will <laughs> play with that. Not sure if that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you for supposed right. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Good seeing you. Thank you. So good seeing you. <laughs> and well done you for going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. That was just seriously. a quick one. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got Julie. Julia. Is it raining? No, I think there's a well, no, no, I think it was a fly hitting the okay. Thing. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, how are you? Did I... Oh, I'm so excellent. Good, so Good. excellent. I, um, <sighs> wow, the 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 thing with Maureen, like that wasn't at all what I was going to talk about, but that was amazing because I'm having similar issue. Uh, and have been for a long time with pain right at the ischial tuberosity, like intense pain. Yeah. And um, like sitting, I hate chairs. I hate sitting. I hate, and I have to lie down all the time or stand up, down, up, down. And I thought it was about my SI and the fusion surgery and all this stuff, but maybe it's not. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and what you said, Pernilla, about, you know, this pain is not against you. It's a cry for help. Like that just about made me lower my hand because I wasn't going to want to talk because I was about to cry. I've been getting that message um, uh, repeatedly. Like, mm -hmm. this is not against you, Julie. Like, just pay attention to it. So that brings me to what I wanted to share, which was just gratitude. Mm -hmm. This, since the retreat, um, man, just things keep falling into place like dominoes, you know, in one of those Rube Goldberg things, like, uh, amazing. I know, like the week after I had this amazing insight about, uh, how I was creating something out of nothing by looking at a second fetter issue around weakness mm. and my belief weakness that I was this weak thing, but I didn't see it as me. I was projecting it onto my partner in a really ugly kind of way in my mind. Yeah. Uh, not fortunately, not outwardly, but <clears throat> in my mind. And then I saw how all of that was really just my own uh, issue around weakness and yeah. how I was compensating for it by this arrogant 
knowing, thinking that I know best. And yeah. it, like I saw how that's, I've been doing that my whole life by learning these silly facts that I thought were true. And that made me feel better because I knew stuff, mm -hmm. apparently. <laughs> I just didn't want to face that that was just like this cover up of um, this belief that I was this weak little sick creature. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, since that insight, and I don't know how long ago that was, maybe two, three weeks, who knows? Time is just. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> ever since then, I've been in this like ninth fetter flow of how things just arise at the appropriate time and a, a video or a piece of text or something, a conversation or like anything. Yeah. And I just, and even just in this meeting, it's like, oh, you need to hear that. Like, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Yeah. And this happened last night with a video that appeared on my, um, the, you know, the algorithm just suddenly showed me your uh, video about the bubble of reality. Oh. So I was like, okay, well, why not? You know, it was 10 o'clock, but I wasn't <laughs> sleeping. So I pushed play and I listened to it. And then this morning, uh, I had like a, a sudden understanding of how I was creating. And like, I thought I had seen this before, but I didn't see it deeply or there was just another layer of seeing this thing that I was creating which was um death mm. I was creating death like out of nothing I was creating death and um man I just started crying like from joy like weeping yeah. from joy at the release of like I don't have to believe that. That's just bullshit. That's just from straight from back here. Yep. Like this concept of, yeah. of death. Yeah. Like weak body that's going to die. It's just all made up. Like it's totally made up out of nothing. Absolutely. Anyway, it like I, I, there wasn't really, I didn't really have, um, a question i just wanted to thank you guys oh <laughs> thank, you so <laughs> thank you so much like there's you know i had this belief that you know these fetters are going to fall and they've already fallen blah 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 but i'll do the retreat anyway because i also have a belief that no they don't fall like that they do this and uh -huh. they're definitely doing this uh, yes. like last like i thought i had seen through the fetter of awareness but like your meditation, Todd, just today, like that witness saying I am awareness is just a sensation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It's just this whole thing just makes me, I don't know, just super grateful. I'm just grateful. I'm so happy. So I'm grateful so to have you. Yeah. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy you went to the retreat. Uh, yeah. And that yeah, yeah it, it's incredible. I bet. Yeah. I don't I never know what to say because it's like it, it it's such a I feel like we're so privileged to be in the oh thank you, Hannah. That, that we're in such a privileged position just to be able to share this kind of thing and then to see how, you know, like the effect that it has is just so humbling. And it's like, because mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't feel personal, like it's us doing anything. And so it always feels weird taking credit for things, but it's like, it's this interaction of- Which is doing it. Exactly. It's, it's like, it's yeah. like, you need both sides of the, of the, the, yeah, but it's it's it's, it's to... the thing about it can't if if it's not received. Yeah, exactly. It, what what we are doing is 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 nothing. It's the exactly. ways received that makes it something out of nothing. So mm. it's it's you it's you that is receiving. You could have listened to that to that um, teaching about the bubble of reality at another day, 
and your mind wouldn't have been where it was. You wouldn't have listened to it just before sleep. You wouldn't, your subconscious wouldn't have worked with it during sleep. So you wouldn't have woken up and had the insights that you had. All that has nothing to do yeah. with, with me or my, my work or me doing it. And somebody else is listening to the same, the same teaching. And I have completely different insights about their mother or about their, you know, their boss or, so it, it cannot possibly be about what we do, our inquiries or our, our teachings or lessons or anything. It is really nothing. And you guys are making it into something. And that is so humbling on this yeah. side of it. Yeah. Because we sit and see all the things. It's really like throwing a ball and you just start to juggle the most amazing way. And we are in awe yeah. about what is happening on on that side of it. Yeah, it's awe in like I'm feeling the awe of the flow, like and just like suddenly there's just this growing or deepening trust in the flow. Like just mm -hmm. go with it. Just keep saying yes. Yes. Because yes. every time I say yes and don't resist, like the thing about the adductor and uh, giving it love and the ischial tuberosity that hurts and it's just a message and doesn't mean anything it's not yeah. like a lifelong problem you know like i don't know there's just something about trust yes yes yeah. and meeting whatever is arising with love and compassion then you put mm -hmm. your hand on it and then you massage it softly and you find a, a trigger point you trigger the trigger point and then you go with what then is happening or then you want to sit differently or lie on the floor or shake it out in a dance or and you just you just go with that ninth feather flow or whatever your body wants you to do instead of being you know a stick in the wheel of there's pain i hate this pain i don't want this pain then mm -hmm. you just let go of all that all thoughts about it and just so I do have a, one question that just yeah. arose um, about that. Um, there's a message. I'm, I'm, I trust that there's a message in that. And, and part of the message sort of came through a couple of days ago, which was I've been hard on. It's saying you've been too hard on me. Mm. And so I'm kind of like, OK, I, I get that. I hear it. Um, would you recommend that I work with the eyeball rolls or a mantra or something regarding that? Yes, definitely. When when you have when your body is telling you you've been too hard on hard on me, just like if it was another person, you would say, I'm so sorry, how can I help? And then you you allow whatever mantra comes up, oh. I love you. Okay. I love you. Then that's the mantra or I'm safe. Then, okay, I'm safe. And then that's the mantra. So you just allow whatever comes up when you just first apologize to what, what you have done and what the body, what the body is telling you. I'm so, so sorry. How can I help? And then you allow whatever is coming up and that is going to be your mantra. Okay. You can then do eye rolls with the mantra that comes up. If that feels normal and natural and helpful, then you do that. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> I will I will work on that. So so much of this does come down to, like you had said um, to Maureen about not having the mind just dictate, I mm -hmm. should do this machine and this machine and this machine. It's really that flow of allowing the body, like trusting that the body expresses what it needs in that moment and then just does it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in the gym, it's that feeling of like that machine, like there's like a gravity towards it. It's like being pulled towards that kind of motion with this. It's that gravity of like, it really feels like there's a need for acceptance. Okay. So then mm -hmm. you you give the acceptance that's needed and you'll just know in that moment what feels like it's missing, what feels like it's calling out to be done. And if it's like, you know, sitting on the floor and doing this particular exercise or standing up and dancing or putting your hand on your heart and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you over and over again. It's just not having the mind become the barrier to say, no, no, I think actually I should be doing this. And I think maybe if I should... Maybe, like I that, maybe I should go for a while. Maybe I should, you know, I've done, I haven't done enough of that today or for a while. I think I should do, 
it's letting that just nope that's that's just a barrier that's just the mind taking what it thinks it knows and trying to impose that and it's just allowing the body to just do what feels really right yeah i have a slight um problem when i walk into a gym just because of the years and years of walking to the into a gym with a mindset of okay we're gonna do this yeah yeah <laughs> That mindset is still there and it's hard for me to f go with the flow in a gym because it's, yeah, it's then been don't. corrupted. Then don't do something else that, that, that feels better, that feels more right. Then do that. You know, we give up the idea of leg day and arm day when we're doing this sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> No adductor days for Julie. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's really just, it, and it's a, it's a fun thing if you can let go in the gym because it's, it's really like that feeling of like these muscles are just calling out for movement, and so then you go to the machine that just does that kind of movement, and you do that for what feels right, and then it's like this really feels tight, and this needs something, and then you just kind of go that way, and it's like. It, it just becomes this much more free, loose, and there's no judgment. Oh, but I didn't work on those muscles today. And I didn't do that today. And none of that extra nonsense. It's just it feels really good. You know, <laughs> just, just really like, like those, those muscles feel really good now. They, they really got some attention. That was nice. Very different way of, of doing it. Such a different way. Yeah. This way would be, yeah, no. I'm going to, I'm going to try that though, because that's a challenge, like not to not even pay attention to the thoughts that say, well, yesterday you did blah, blah. So yeah. today you need to do blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to hearing how that goes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you. Seriously. Thank you so much. Thank Seriously, you so thank much. You. It is received. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. I think it's who we take Sad first because I don't sure. think we met Sad. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so sorry. I'll, now we I'll just declared that. Ella and Leela old. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Sad. I find you at Spotlight. Hello, my Hi, friend. Welcome. How are you? Um, I'm good. I uh, saw the Awakening curriculum online. And then I also saw, um, I think, this group. So I emailed. Um, I have no idea where I am on this whole fetter thing. It's a good place to um, be. It's a very good place to be. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a lot of different practices for, you know, quite a few years. Um, meditation kind of started with like just like a stress relief thing like 12 years ago or so. And then it kind of kept changing into different um then there was this whole idea of like non-duality that showed up at some point. Yeah. Um, it felt initially like this is something that you do and then you get some sort of result that's around the corner. <laughs> and then now it just seems like there's, this is like a very deep, long type of process. <laughs> <laughs> it can um, be, it but can it can be. It, can it doesn't be, have right? to be. Yeah, yeah it yeah, doesn't exactly. have to be. It can be. It's more about the what what we do with the feathers is just making it very clear that that we tend as human beings, we tend to identify with lots of different things. And the the bottom line of it is just becoming aware of any at any point when you identify with anything anything as anyone. That is basically the sentence you need. And then you don't need anything else. <laughs> what 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 we do with the curriculum is putting putting the spotlight to the ten different ways that we identify. So it's 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 only deep if you need to go into it with that depth. But what in what normally occurs is that we we tend to believe that, but I really haven't got that much that I need to work with. But then we start to peel the onion, right? And then one thing pops up after the other, after the other, things that we were not aware of. And that is where the curriculum is helpful. Because if you only work with what you think you need to work with, then everything is going to be ego-driven, you know, whatever your mind wants you to work with. 
instead of what is actually needed. Um, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, I, I mean, for me, I've been. I mean, I guess I'm trying to figure out where, like, what to do. Um, I have like a meditation practice, mm -hmm. and it's mostly, you know, self inquiry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And um, and uh, I mean, I went to a Vince meeting. Mm -hmm. Also, nice. it was recommended. Um, and I mean, I can, I mean, in, in experience, it's, it's kind of clear that all memory or all thoughts about the future kind of disappear right now. And even like, like Todd talked about in his uh, meditation in the beginning, where it's like sensations feel like they're located because I have like these mental images, yeah. but as soon as I don't, as soon as I realize that, then I have no idea where sensations are happening. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I can, I guess I can, I just, I'm trying to figure out what, like, where to, where to go with this. I, I can see that there's no, or it seems, I don't know if it's intellectual or an experience, but it, it seems like, yeah, there, whenever I look, there's not really a self, mm -hmm. as in there's no experience uh, of, you know, sad, except for the thinking, like there's, yeah. there's experience of thinking. But then there's there's the other experiences, like the other senses, and they're all just kind of coming and going here. Like and there's no, and that's pretty much all that's going on. Mm. Um, but the despite that, there's a lot of uh, there's still a lot of I guess yeah reactivity to yeah. you know events in life. So. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's also, I guess, just happening. <laughs> it's also just yeah. appears. That's a, that's yeah, but, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slope, it's slope, very slope. slippery because but, that that's yeah. that's like that's a neighbor to bypassing. Yeah. Um, I I would definitely recommend you to do the curriculum. Start at the first feta first lesson and move yourself forward. Whenever mm. you, whenever there's something where you have like, okay, I understand this intellectually, but at my job, you know, my boss he is a twat. <laughs> you know so so and then you know then you can write in the in the discord group and ask people okay i know there's nobody here and yet whenever somebody says something about that i get so angry i so aggressive about it it's because then people can help you with putting a headlight to all the blind spots that you have and that's mm -hmm. why we have the community to help one another in going out. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that you're that 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 you're not identifying? If nobody's identifying, then who is reacting? Yeah, that's. I mean, your example is pretty close. Uh, when when it comes to my career, I'm not. Uh, I'm, there's a lot of dissatisfaction mm -hmm. um, about how things were supposed to go and how things went. Um, I mean, and now I, I now I can see that these are all the thoughts or that are like these are just to, you know. There's even I think in the awakening curriculum, I, I've been kind of going through some of the lectures and, and I started from the beginning. And one of the very helpful things was just to uh, I think you said you can't solve your emotions; you can dissolve them. Mm, so yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's about doubt that you can't solve doubt of 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 of. Yeah, you, you can't resolve doubt. You can only dissolve doubt. So whatever whatever issue comes up, you can't solve it at all. You can only dissolve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I interrupted yeah. you. No. Uh. Yeah. So I've been I've been kind of you know just feeling into uh, whenever there's some discomfort, I've been just feeling into the emotion in mm -hmm. the body. Yeah. And. Good. Um, I mean, does that just go on for a long time until it doesn't, or and that's what it seems like? Yeah, you know, it's going to be different for everybody, depending on the level of identification that's there, depending on the conditioning, the traumas, all the things that have been there in the past. Some people, it takes longer than others. Um, the more consistently you do it, the more it becomes like an immediate thing. Like I'm assuming in the very beginning, you had to kind of remember to like feeling something, feeling a contraction. And then it was probably like afterwards that you would remember like, oh, just experienced that emotion. And then you kind of can check in with it afterwards. And 
now it sounds like maybe you're getting to where you recognize it while it's happening and you mm -hmm. can kind of step back and be like, okay, just feeling it, just feeling it, letting it dissolve. And that becomes more and more of an automatic process so that the precursors to those emotions will start to be recognized at first. I talk about this a lot because I did this sort of thing with um, panic attacks back when I was you know, deeply, deeply had all sorts of anxiety disorders. And um, it was that same process with panic attacks where it got to where I can notice just the, the, the first, you know, vague precursor of a panic attack. And then that awareness of it and that stepping back from it and not playing into the same thought cycles would just completely cut it off from ever manifesting. And it's that sort of thing with a lot of these emotions where you can just feel the sensation because sensations will continue. It's not like we're ever going to become completely numb and just completely blissed out for eternity. So you can be in a situation in the job and something happens and there will be probably some sort of sensation that arises in the body. But the question is, does it get made into anger? Does it get made into some sort of frustration or something where, you know, you have these stories about the coworkers and, and other things, or is it just, Oh, there's, there's this tension. There's this feeling of, of, you know, energy, heat, whatever it is. And then just watching that for a moment until it goes, okay. And that was its thing. Now the question is, why is that still happening? Right? So the sensation can arise the question is, what is it about that environment with what somebody says or does or what is expected of you or what you're expecting of yourself? All of those things that are causing that sensation. And then that's where like the second fetter stuff kind of comes back again, mm -hmm. where what is there in this moment that feels triggering for this sensation to even be there? So you've recognized that the sensation can be there, the what we call the emotion can be there, and you don't need to act upon it. You don't need to get angry and storm out of the building or anything like that. But then we can go into why is this environment even a problem for you? And then that's where we can get down to some of the more emotional core issues that will help to resolve that. Then the other stuff doesn't even matter. But but it's it's kind of working on it bit by bit. And so it's it's not that your experience is going to be just Every time you have an emotion, you're looking at it and dissolving it, and it's going to be that way for the next 10 years. The process is constantly ebbing and flowing and changing and giving you more, more clues to, okay, well, this is because when I was six years old, you know, my father said to me, blah, blah, blah. And then you're, you're still acting out of that same old father reaction every time your boss says something to you. Okay, can you go back now and work with the father issue first? resolve that and then all of a sudden the boss issue doesn't have any steam anymore so the boss will end saying stuff and you won't even hear what you're hearing now that because the whole story about dad that has not been resolved it's resolved so there's no there's no meat on it anymore now it's just your boss saying something and you can see that he's talking out of his trauma which has got nothing to do with you so, so there's no, there's no um, issue anymore in anything. So it's, it's not like, it's not like that, that there's not um, problems happening anymore. You're just not attached to it. So it doesn't become a problem. You're effectively more like we talked about with the mirror mind. It's like, you're just in a situation where there's a person, a boss who's saying something and something that's happening in response to it, but that you're not adding on to it all of the the bullshit backpack of this relates to my inadequacy or my issue with authority or this guy's, you know, my Think, boss's things, rage things issues. Stop, things stop being self-referential. Yeah. So when the boss says something, it's not about, oh, something that has to do with sad, oh, the pain, the pain. Because it's not self-referential anymore. It's just him saying something and and that's it. That it's kind of like bouncing off because there's no there's nothing for the for any hooks to go into because there's no hooks anymore. Okay. Um when like when you you said you feel it and you notice the precursors, mm -hmm. um, and then work through those precursors. 
uh, how do you work through a precursor? Yeah. So we have different methods depending on what works for you and depending on the situation. Um, if it's something where you know that there's like a specific incident or a specific belief, you know, call it toxic starting point, like something where there's like a feeling of lack of self-worth that's just always been an undercurrent through your life or that there's this feeling of shame or guilt or something that has just always been a prevalent undercurrent. Using the reparenting where we go back to specific memories, specific situations where you remember having felt this specific shame sensation or fear sensation or guilt or um, you know unworthiness where you really learned in that moment that there is something fundamentally wrong with you and just feel that sensation. You go back to what it was like at that age, remember the situation as vividly as possible. First, feel as though you are the child again, feeling what it feels like, really like you are there in that moment. And then you kind of hold that sensation there while in your mind, you're also there as 2024 Saad. And then you can dialogue with little Saad and give them, give him the, the, the advice, the comforting, the reassurance, ask him what he needs, be that, that adult who was there that he needed in that moment that he didn't have. That, that wise presence that wasn't there that led him to feeling like this emotion that I'm feeling now is something big and overwhelming mm -hmm. and says something about me, you can now go in with the wisdom of, of your current age and say, no, no, actually, this is just something that you're feeling now. It's okay. You know, this doesn't say anything about you. And then it's, it's working with it in the past, but it's working with it right now because you're effectively taking what you feel now, because it is here now. Whatever happened to you when you're six, that emotion still feels like it's here now. And so you're giving that reassurance and you're turning that around in this moment. And it's basically healing the past and the present at the same time. Because the emotion is not tied into time. Yeah. The emotion is here now, as if it was tied into time, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. And it's also reconfiguring, you know, we have the idea that like something happened to me when I was six, I can remember it. And we feel like that's like a, like an actual place, solid that's, that's, memory, it's, it's a yeah. solid memory that is some place that I could go back to. And it's literally happening the way that I remembered it happening, or that it's like a video recording that every time I watch is exactly the same, but we know it's not. Um, and so this way here, you're actually reconfiguring that memory because it doesn't exist anymore. That moment when you were six does not exist. It, it hasn't existed since a day after that moment or since minutes a, after a minute, a minute after. after that moment. It's been gone and it's not here anymore. And so every time that has any sort of impact on how you feel right now, it's purely mind generated. So instead of having a memory that is coming back, that has been kind of tainted and manipulated over the course of the years so that it becomes the encapsulation of everything that was indicative of mm. your sense of shame or your sense of unworthiness. Now that just becomes uh, mutated. You know, you start changing it in a way that becomes healthier. Yeah, now but, it's but, not. Sorry. No. Well, now it's not that that shame memory now it's something where you're actually recapitulating it in the mind and making it into something different than it was because it doesn't exist it's all just mind created um illusion but it's also about about realizing that when it happened and you were six you were immature in your mind yeah. you had an immature emotional uh, person or psychology and intellectual you were immature you were six so, so whatever you perceived happened, it didn't happen that way. Yeah. It happened in the way that the six-year-old brain could perceive it. The six-year-old psychology could perceive it, which means that even what we said before, that, that a minute after it happened, yeah. it's not there anymore, but it might not even have been there. Yeah. You might have heard it or, and experienced it with the psychology of a six-year-old. So looking at it now, the... The, the 
the the emotions and the feel of the topic has grown with you, but the topic hasn't grown. Yeah. And that's why it it helps a lot of times to look at it as an adult. Not not that you remember the story or any of that, but you just look at it with adult eyes and you can see, oh, I see why Sad really got, you know, affected by what happened. But I can also see what the adult did in that situation. I understand it from that point of view now because you're an adult. So you can hold space for everything and allow everything to be completely different than what you remembered. And I would also add to that, that even though that's also super true about the child developing psychology, it's also relevant even now. Like Saad from two days ago has had experiences where you took in things and they were filtered in a certain way based on your beliefs in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you might notice weeks, months, years from now that you can remember that memory and that that memory is not a pure experience. You weren't just completely mirror mind in that moment there was something coloring it all you took in something that was relevant at that moment and there was something refer self-referential that that made it that twisted it and made it into something that it wasn't and so then we can still go back even to these adult times mm. and and okay that that was a week ago and i felt you know really really shameful about something all right now can you have that wise perspective of being a couple weeks older and then looking mm -hmm. at it and recognizing that what you perceived wasn't actually what happened either. So we can come at it with with that kind of um, uh, wise detachment mm -hmm. uh, to any time period in our life. It's not like it has to end when we're eighteen or twenty one or something like that. And then then use the use the curriculum and use Discord. So when you work with something, then make it instead of just doing a lesson and then you go out in your life and have your life and then you go back and do a lesson and then you go out in your life see if you can incorporate it because we want you to take all this off the cushion we want you to take this into your real life because otherwise it's just an intellectual you know entertainment that you have we really want you to experience non-duality in your life where there are no hooks into anything because there's nothing to have hooks into and no one to have those hooks so, so really use the curriculum, use Discord uh, with all the people you have there and whatever comes up, reach out. Okay. Um, can I get the link to the Discord? Yeah. Um, sure. If you... Uh, we, we can can, can well, we make a link now? Here? Yeah, actually I can. And, and for yeah. anybody who is, not, who is not on Discord, this link will run out. So if you're... It's not... It's up there. No, no, this works. Oh, it's this up works. There. Oh crap! It's up there. Hold on. No, I don't use that one. I don't use that one. I don't use that one. I always use this one. Why is it not? Oh, because yeah. you go up there. No, no, there it is. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's the way to do That's it. That's the way to do it. Where are now we have guys? bias rates again. Uh, Money for nothing. Uh, where is the chat? Internet. There's a the chat. Um, let's go to everybody meeting group chat yeah. and so this will expire probably in seven days i said it to not expire but that almost never happens so. so if you're not on discord click on this link and sign up for discord now and then you have it Thank and you. well and welcome to the community absolutely it'll be good to have you there yeah thank you thank you you're so good welcome good seeing you good seeing you Same. thank you all right, well, we got Ella. Now it's old Ella. Um, I kind of feel like I need to run to the bathroom quickly, but it will be okay. Hi, Ella. Ella? There we go. Hey. Hello. Hi, Todd. I can hey. wait till you come back uh, from the bathroom. <laughs> okay, actually, if you don't mind, I'll be, I'll be like two seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> We can, oh. <laughs> we can just hang out for a moment. We can just hang out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I can take a few breaths. And it's funny to watch how uh, <clears throat> how uh, the body does its own thing, regardless if you identify or not, whatever. 
yeah, yeah, it really, really. Uh, yeah, and freezes or does this or that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fascinating, really, to me. And, <clears throat> and um, yeah. Hmm. But after what you said, Pernilla, I uh, <clears throat> I realized that I'll be um, I'll be doing a lot of something out of nothing, right? <laughs> like, yeah. To start with, like, the, because uh, <laughs> what I uh, <clears throat> what I really feel I need to say is a, a lot of things that um, I feel. Uh, grateful for to you guys mm -hmm. so I, I said Todd that I'll be doing a lot of <clears throat> nothing or, no something out of nothing <laughs> or nothing out of something <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's just funny sometimes like words don't yeah I know but I knew uh, right <laughs> you start talking it's like what uh, <laughs> um what comes out of your mind mouth but <clears throat> but anyway I really, I really feel I, I need to say that, start with that, like how, um, how grateful um, I am to you guys for a lot of things. And it, it feels like this, this community is just circulating love and gratitude. Once you say yeah. you're grateful, you get like so much of that <laughs> back. And with you, Todd, it's just like beyond. <laughs> uh, but um so, you know, I, I know um, you said that, Pernil, I think uh, during the retreat that, <clears throat> that there are countless factors uh, and countless being that, that contribute to where, you know, where we are now and uh, to this moment. And I'm, I'm completely aware of that. But, uh, <clears throat> but having said that, I really have so much so much gra gratitude for um, for your work and for you know what I've learned from you and what I'm learning from you and and on so many different levels I'm I'm going to make a list of all of that and and, and, and you know post it somewhere <laughs> one day because it feels like it's it, these are countless things so you know I I was one. Um, I, I was one of those uh, people uh, who uh, I, I, I used to. Um, so, so what I wanted to say is that I'm so grateful for that for that circular to start with because there are a lot more things mm -hmm. with that circular um, circular. Or, 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 <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wheel you know yeah yeah, yeah the wheel <laughs> uh, of the dental model yeah. uh, to start with um so um i i used to use this linear model and mm -hmm. and it's not to criticize uh, mm -hmm. or compare those models these are just models mm -hmm. and i i feel very grateful for both this is absolutely not to discount the other or you know mm -hmm. like say that this one is better than the other it's um and ha having said that it's just I remember like how it was what I was working on, how much I wanted to believe that I'm working on this. And like you said, Pernil, I've just said that, that uh, that was so ego driven, you know, because I, I wanted to believe that I'm here. And, uh, and even though I felt that here, that was not true, but I wanted to trust that whoever said that this is it to work on, then I will be working on that. And um, so uh, when I learn about this model that you are using, it, uh, what it did for me, it just gave me so much validation and so much, uh, like so much validation for what I was experiencing and so much you know allowing on such a deep level deeper and deeper there's still probably levels of that I don't know but but uh to really learn to 
trust my experience and be with where I was and with what I was. And that was my thing anyway, you know, like not trusting myself. That's how, what I learned in life. So that was so, so helpful to slowly and gradually be so okay with anything. And I, I feel like I am in such a, such a good space and, and, and really, well, I'm sure I, I have blind spots or whatever, but I feel so open to anything that comes out like I've never been before. And that, that is definitely, you, you, you know, what I've learned from you contribute to, to that big time. You know, I, it, so it's happy. so relaxed my system and, and gave me that permission on such a deep level that you, you cannot believe. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. And, and, and there are so many other things like you, you, uh, like so many, even little things like turning, like you said, like, like for example, the, uh, uh, the, you said once that, you know, when you were by the age of 60, you are like your mother, if you're a woman, <laughs> or a, Gee, and and you know, I <clears throat> when I heard that from you, I thought that I was okay, uh, and 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 I already was okay with my mom, and I loved her, but that again m- allowed me to start looking at everything, like you know, like not dismissing anything, just just mm-hmm. just that level of seeing and noticing, and and it's and believable and I mean I'm not going to tell you the examples but but uh but discovering like how true it is even though we are living totally different lives and different parts of the world and then how how true it is and 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 I love it and it's amazing to discover it and you know, a, a while ago when I, <clears throat> well, it was a while ago and my kids still were at home and they used to tell me like, oh, you're just like your mother. It was like the biggest insult to me, you know? <laughs> and now I would say like, of course, you know? <laughs> <I love> it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so no problem <laughs> with that. So, so things like that and Oh, let's see. Oh, that the drumming, you know, that is, oh my goodness. I don't know. There's something about drumming for me, like I've I've been discovering, um, but that. So what I wanted to say is that I do, I, 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 I feel I'm pretty good with paying attention to what's going on in the body and you know, and I, I, I've been doing a lot of uh, movement, you know, body movement in different ways for a while. But, um, you know, sometimes I have uh, like that, I don't know if this is maybe partially autistic thing, but, but that overload and like so much going on in the body. And when I cannot take, don't have time to take care of that, it gets really uh you know get so tired and a lot of other things but anyway that was the morning the day before that like the uh uh that's three two weeks ago mm-hmm. you know that that's how um that's how i i felt when we started the session i didn't even know that we, we would be doing this yeah. but uh but i felt that oh my gosh it was so hard i cannot couldn't they didn't have time to take care of it. And after like, I don't know, a half of that 10, 15 minutes of it was completely clear. It was yeah. like so amazing. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, gee, I would be like <laughs> playing <laughs> this for me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel this way. So that, that was wonderful. Amazing. And, uh, Seriously, guys, the list goes on. I, you know, it's amazing. Uh, it's so it, wonderful. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And um, it is. I cannot find the link to that now, but I'm going to find it. <laughs> and um, uh, anyway, so um, hmm. we have the link on Discord. And, you have the link on Discord, Ella. 
Yeah, but I, I, I was scrolling down to, uh, this today because I thought that we would have it again and I ah. couldn't find it, but I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. It's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's both on your channel and on my channel. And yeah, and, I'll yeah, find and, it. Uh, uh, it's under on my channel. I have a playlist called Unconventional okay. Presentation okay. Music. And so it's under yeah. that. Yeah, and I think it's, mine it's, is on the on a um, embodied embodied, right? embodied movement or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It's one I think it's one of my brains thing that sometimes I do not see things that are what oh, or I can that. relate to that. Sounds familiar. Can you? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and in terms of, I don't know, a few words in terms of where I am, I, well, I love where I am. That's, that's for you sure. Know. You know, I really, I, I really do, honestly. And it doesn't mean that uh, even if something challenging happens, I, I still feel really okay. Um, and, um, and, What's going on? So what, one thing is that uh, those things that are going on with the body, and then I also learn, like, realize that I maybe need, need to start pay atten more attention to that. So what happened is that I I really stopped uh, during COVID, like going to the gym regularly and exercising. I, I don't have muscles almost anymore <laughs> and that's but anyway um so so I have a lot of things going on in the body even though I I walked a lot and I did some yoga obviously it's not enough to have all the muscles uh, uh strong so so I have a lot of things going uh I don't know maybe a lot but some things going on in the body and and I uh thought I was kind of taking care of that in, in terms of staying with what is and um but but then uh when you when you talk for Pernilla I think you said that uh you know like right arm means this right knee means this restless legs mean this I'm like hell it makes sense <laughs> even though yeah. I feel like you know like I'm not sure but yeah, I definitely still have those tendencies. So, so going at, back to the point with the body, I feel like maybe I still need to really pay attention, even though I, I believe I'm not like uh, doing things the way I used to, and. Um, and things are happening in a very different way but still those tendencies might be somewhere so 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 who, who knows yeah. uh, and so I, I i i definitely feel very open to that and and um and i i know i should yeah i listen so much about you know hear so much about going to gym and i i feel like i would love to do that i i need to do that I feel full toward that I still cannot start, you know, I don't know, this the inertia or something or, but I really have a very hard time. I have like always, I, can, I just cannot go because but, but, this one is but, but, but Ellis, just start doing exercises at, at home, just like we talked with Maureen about, mm. just mm. activating the muscles and the psychology that is connected with the muscles and then mm. things will come up and maybe you will, the, the, the resistance you have to the gym that would also come up because there's there's an underlying belief about what a gym is mm. and that is why you're not going so instead of being forceful about it just do exercises mm. at home where you activate all the different muscles and then let things fall as they fall maybe i'll try yeah but, no uh, no need to be forced. i would love to have some some body to like yeah motivate me for that. yeah <laughs> that so maybe discord is a good uh good uh, um thing to do that yeah so yeah it's great and what else and, and another thing is is that um uh you know i i very interesting fa fascinating to me like i feel that something let go and I have no doubts that there's no no such thing like 
I don't know, predictability or, uh, you yeah. know, that I can expect something. It's never like I expect. It's like, Completely. so something let go. And at the same time, it's amazing. Like, and this is something that, that I really uh, appreciate, like have, feel grateful to you guys because that that openness to look at, at everything, everything absolutely yes other from you I, that that yeah. is you know yeah uh, and and then so I know this like even though I know it's it's not it's it's it, it's not there but then I catch myself like you know like someone offers something to me I uh, or something is about to happen and that is to be in a certain way. And then of course it's not this, this way. Yeah. And I'm like, what? You know? Yeah. So, and it takes a moment to uh, like notice it, let go. But I do notice that. So, so something must be still identifying oh, with yeah. even, but like, what the heck, you know, like, you know, <laughs> Like, yeah. because you know that yeah. it's it's i know i have no doubts that it's illusion and still you the know conditioning I, I, that it's, hasn't it's, it's just myself it's on, just on, causes on like, and conditions yeah it's just causes and conditions it's just noticing yeah. what what exactly what you say notice what is arising and be curious to it and see mm. look look if that do inquiry mm. is there anything here that needs releasing or is it just <laughs> causes and conditions and of course, it can't be anything but that. Yeah, yeah. It is I definitely conditioning. And I've realized how, how big part of my life it used to be. Because, you know, I, I've learned to like try so hard, you know, to like do what you want me to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and be that good girl and, and, do, and still... And, and it still doesn't work, you know, it yeah. Work yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, so that's, it's probably in all of my, whatever, cells, bones, and, you yeah. know, yeah. but it's, it's, it's really great to, um, to be able to notice that and Amazing. be okay with that. So thank you so much, guys. That's it. Dude, so happy. Thank you so, so happy. much. Yeah. It's been so, so happy. It's been so, you know, seeing the, the progression of like lightness, with mm. you where it's like the, yeah. the freedom just opening up and opening up and opening up and it's like this used to be a thing and now it's not and now this is this used to be one more little hook oh and that one's not there anymore it has been so yeah. lovely like, yeah. just to see that opening up mm. and, and yeah and and again i know we've we've thanked you profu prof profusely before but thank you again for everything with the retreat and oh it's gosh. been so yeah. so yeah, amazing really. we, we are so grateful to have you as part of the community um, and uh, and then i just yeah. want to ask maureen she asked what it was yeah. about when you're 60 and i just want to to just say what it what it is that ella has been working with when you are 60 if you are a woman when you're 60 years old, you will be similar to your mother in 80% of all of your actions. It's both actions and thoughts. So it's it it might it it's not about that you will be like an exact copy paste, but the starting point will be the same. So if there's a starting point in her about not listening to her needs, um then you will have the same starting point. The result might be the same, but the starting point is there. So when you're 60 years old, you are like your mother in 80% of all your actions. And for the men, when you're 60 years old, you are like your dad in 80% of all of your actions and yeah, um, choices and thoughts and yeah. Question about that. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Go so, on. so other <laughs> side of the screen here. No, so if, mm. if in a situation like yeah, where, where you where haven't had a dad, I haven't really had, yeah, I mean, for for so my my father died when I was eleven, but my parents were divorced when I was two, and so I only saw him occasionally before he died. So I don't have like many memories or associations, and I am currently, I mean, he died when he was forty three. I'm forty six, so I've currently outlived him. So I'm curious, you know, but. I was with my mom, you know, forever. So whatever, whatever male model model that you that you had in your life, 
And it's the same for women. Whatever role model that you picked, it could be a teacher, it could be an actor, it can be a bigger brother, it can be a step parent, it can be anyone that you look up to, that is the person that you're going to copy. So if if your Definitely. dad if your dad hasn't been there, you had copied the next male figure. Mm. That's a little scary. Yeah, we can talk about that. Have <laughs> <laughs> you heard me say that before? No, I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, I said I've, that. I've said Actually, that lots of times. I don't remember that. That, yeah. hasn't, that hasn't clicked. So. We got we we need to end the meeting now because we got talking to do. We, we have we have a lot to unpack. <laughs> So, I have I, I have uh, seventeen years to to sort this out before, <laughs> before the sixty year old thing hits hits and the shit really hits the fan. No no no, that's <laughs> the thing you can't you can't change it. It's mirror neurons you can't change it. It is as it is, and it's actually good news. It's actually good news, just like LSS, because whatever issue you have with your mom or your dad, whatever issue you have with them, now you know the end result. It's like having a cheat sheet. This this is gonna happen. This is how it is. It's mirror neurons. It's there's nobody deciding for the mirror neurons not to not to do anything. You can't decide that. There's nobody in charge of that. It will happen. It is how it's going to be, and that's the good news. Because if you already now know what the starting point is, if you're annoyed about your mom never ever meeting her needs, well now you know what to look at. It will always be your primary, but you can change the secondary, and the secondary is. It's your reaction. So the primary is just happening. That's the mirror neurons kicking in. But the secondary and what we can work with is the time between the primary happening and the secondary that is kicking in. That time span can get shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah. So you might have somebody saying something and you feel guilty about it right away. The time span, that's the primary. The secondary is is what you decide. You can have a reaction where you breathe into it and you look at it and you go like, okay, is guilt really a thing yeah. or is it just something I have been conditioned to? And that is, that is, that is the wiggle room, yeah. the time between the the primary and the secondary, but there's, you can't do anything about the primary. It's like, you can't change your genetics or what parents you had or what day you were born. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Uh, no, 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 we don't have a lesson on mirror neurons. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. To add to your list of, <laughs> of stuff for next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Ella. I'm really happy that you took it to heart and worked yeah. with it and brought it up now. So, yeah. so now we can re frustrate you. everybody else here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Much so much. Thank you. Mm. And Leela had a question, but unfortunately she had to leave. Oh no, yeah. I really would like to hear a um, next time. Yeah. And and if if you're watching this afterwards, Leela, thank yeah. you so much for everything, yeah. posting the, the links and and making all the uh, bite sizes and yeah. the 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 picture thingy. Yeah. So Okay, I think that's it. That so, it? Yeah, we got summer holiday now. We so do. Can you, can, you guys, uh, Dude. can you guys mention oh. one more time uh, when you're coming back, even though you probably yeah. will email us and all that? It's the, it, the, the next inquiry group is the 20th of August. The next inquiry, no, sorry, the next Q&A is the 30th of August. 30th, 30, okay. Yes. Yeah. Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then and then Thank for the you. rest of the year we're back to having Tuesday, Tuesday, Friday. And unless things change, I think I'm going to be there for both of them from now on. Yeah. So uh, but, it's, yeah. it's kind of a Yeah. Yeah. Not 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 really the division. Originally the Q and A was really just for like curriculum Q and A questions and then the inquiry group was like for inquiry and they've kind of but yeah, they're kind of merged. But, but but then now when we're moving into the higher betters, I can imagine that they're more inquiry, no, sorry, more curriculum questions yeah. in the QA. Yeah. I can imagine. So thank you so much, thank you guys. You thank you so much. Have a great summer. Uh, um, I'm looking forward, looking forward to reading everything you guys are doing on Discord. Yes. Um, thank you so much for being here and have a great summer. Love you all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so much love. So much love. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.